Good morning. My name is Pastor Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Bless this day. Bless our hearts. Holy Spirit, move in the atmosphere. Speak through these lips. No more and no less. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you everything that we are. Lord, as pastors, as ministers, as laymen or women, Father, for your gospel, for your teachings, Lord, for you. We do all things for you because you are our reward. Lord, thank you for this time that you have given us. And I pray that you would manifest yourself to us and give us your heart. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So every minister, every pastor, layman or women, um, it should be every Christian, but unfortunately it's not. So this message is for the ministers. Whether your ministry is small, whether your church is small or big or whatever, this is a message for you guys, okay? So I want you to listen up. I'm gonna try to keep it as short as I can, but these are some things that I've learned. These are some things that we have done and every mistake that we're gonna mention, we have done those as well, okay? <laughs> so this isn't just to you know, make you guys feel bad. This is actually to encourage you. This is actually to teach you, to give you some wisdom on how the kingdom of God works. There are many things about the kingdom of God that are not like the kingdom of the world. Okay? The worldly wise men, the worldly wise women, the worldly wisdom is not God's wisdom. However, there are some things from time to time that do line up with the wisdom of the world. Jesus even talks about it. And we're going to cover that. We're going to get into that, okay? So without further ado, we're going to pray one more time. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for what you're going to do here. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Holy Spirit, we have open ears, open hearts, open minds. Father, move in this atmosphere. Clear the distractions in us, around us, and through us, Lord. In the environment, there's no distractions, just you and I. You and us, Father. Forgive us, teach us according to your holy, perfect word. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to give you guys a picture, as I usually do, before I get started. So, imagine being in combat. Okay, just imagine it the best you can. You got your helmet, you got your vest, your body armor, you got your clothing, your military clothing underneath, right? You've got your elbow pads, your knee pads, you got your weapon, you've got ammunition, you got grenades, you got all this equipment, you got all this gear. And then you're commissioned to go overseas. You're overseas, you're, you're behind the wire, and you're like, oh, we gotta go outside the wire. We gotta confront the enemy. That's why we get all this gear. That's why we get all this training. When you go to Bible college or seminary, or you go to uh, church, right? Bible studies, all that stuff, it's all, that's all training, amen. That's all good stuff. That's great, that's amazing. And finally, it comes down to the hard stuff, getting shot at, getting mortared, grenades and RPGs and explosives going off, getting bombed, right? Getting ambushed. That's the real work of why we get all this gear. But could you imagine, picture with me, could you imagine having all this gear, having all this supplies, having all this backup, having all this, you know, drones and whatnot, sonar, radar and all this stuff and not using any of it, not using any of it. This is what we do as soldiers for Jesus Christ. We, we have all this stuff, but we never confront the enemy. We don't actually go outside the wire. We don't actually do anything for the Lord. Matter of fact, we have all this gear and we come back, we go to church, right? Because church is home base while we're here on this earth, right? We go to church and then we say, man, I did so much for the Lord. I did so much for the Lord. And, and our uniforms look exactly the way they did when we left, so-called left and did something for the Lord. When we left church, our uniforms look exactly the same. 
We got brand new boots. We got brand new uniforms. We got brand new body armor, helmet. We got all this stuff. We go out and guess what? We come back to church and be like, so how, how was your week? It was like, man, it's the same. What do you mean? It's the same. You're not, you're not going through anything. Things weren't hard. You didn't get shot at. No demonic oppression, nothing. Everything was good to go. Yep. Man, your boots look exactly the same. Your uniform looks exactly the same. Anyone who's actually been to combat, you understand one thing. You don't go out and then just come right back. There are infantry guys when I was deployed, when they went out, they went out and they went out for a long time. You didn't see these guys for like a week or two, sometimes a month. And when they came back, they were covered in mud. They were covered in filthy, man. They didn't shower for weeks. They stink. They went out with brand new uniforms, with smiles on their faces. When they came back, they were disheveled. They were disgruntled. They were, they had been behind the enemy lines. They don't come back with everybody, unfortunately. And we should want everybody to come back with us. Because they actually did the work. They actually pushed the kingdom forward. These guys come back. They, I haven't eaten in days. They lost a lot of weight. They've got shrapnel wounds all over them. And you know why we go to church? They come back to the base, the church, in other words, to get re-strengthened, to get re-armored, to get the new helmet, the, to get the new body armor, to get the new stuff so they can go back out again. But could you imagine somebody who didn't even get dirty, didn't even get mud on them, and they come back and be like, man, I saw so much combat this week. Oh, it was so hard. They're like, your boots look like brand new. Look like you hadn't really done anything. I haven't even crawled under the bob wire yet to the other side. Oh man, the spiritual warfare was hard. Really, was it hard? You get that il illustration, okay? That's the picture I'm painting here. You get the idea already. You can understand where I'm getting going with this. Jesus likens it this way. He says, to one man or person, he gave one talent, five talents, ten talents, right? He says, I'm going to go away and I'm going to come back. And two of them were doing what they were supposed to do. And then the last one, he or she said, oh, I didn't do anything. I just stayed on base. And I was just praying that Jesus would come back. I was praying that you would come back and you're here. You're here. What did you do? I didn't do anything. I was just waiting. I was just hiding and waiting till the war to be over, waiting for Jesus to pierce the clouds. You know, I, I, I don't want to go out there. There's war out there. There's people shooting and dying out there. I don't want to go out there. That's what our faith looks like. And what did Jesus do? He rebuked that person, right? He says, you didn't do anything for me. You hid your talent, your gift under the dirt. I called you, let's just for example, I called you to preach or I called you to teach or I called you to evangelize. I called you to serve. I called you to pray. You didn't do anything for me. He says, take this wicked servant, toss them out, right? And the little that they had, they were taken away from them. This is the picture here. The first thing that God gives us, what we should get, obviously is saved, get the Holy Spirit, is get a Bible. Right? We get a Bible and we get a, a, a duty of to, 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 to minister to one person. He says, I want you to take care of that one person, that one new Christian or that one person who doesn't, who's not a Christian. I want you to take care of one person. I want you to feed one person. I want you to teach just one person. I want you to mentor or shepherd one person. Before I became a pastor, pastor means a, a, a person who, who deals with multiple people. But I didn't deal with multiple people at the beginning. I dealt with one person. God gave me one person. God gave you one person. And he says, shepherd that one person. Whether you're a man or a woman, take care of that one person. And then slowly after I've been faithful with little 
He who is faithful with little will be faithful with much. He who is not faithful with one person won't be faithful with two people. And so God gave me one person and I shepherded one person. And then I don't really have to deal with that person as much because now they come back every once in a while. They're learning how to walk on their own. They're reading their Bible for themselves. They're getting into the scriptures and getting closer to Jesus on their own. Then he gives me another person. And I go through basically the same process. Everybody's different, right? And then he gives me a third person. And I'm faithful with three people. And he gives me a fourth person and a fifth person and a sixth person. And you get the idea until now we have a multiple people who come to this church. But a lot of us are like that one person who goes into the gym. I want to lift 500 pounds, but you can't even lift 50 pounds. Matter of fact, you can't even lift five pounds. But you want a mega church. You want a super big church, but you have not even been faithful with the little that I've given you, Jesus said. You think I'm going to overstress you with a mega church? You know how much stress that is? When you can't even lift a little bit for me? You want all this wisdom and all this strength and all this to do for me. And I want you to want those things. And I want you to do more for me, in other words. But you're not ready to carry that weight. You're not ready to carry the abuse, the exhaustion. You don't have that much strength. You don't have that much wisdom because everybody's different. Everybody's got different problems. I come across new problems every day. And I'm like, what? Learn something every day. <laughs> you want finances. You want, these, you want these revivals to happen. That's what I hear a lot. We want revival, Lord. We want revival. We want revival. Why? Your boots aren't even dirty. Have you, shot, have you even shot a bullet yet? No, you haven't shot a bullet yet. You want new equipment? You want new refreshment? You want food already? You haven't even ran a mile yet for me. And you're already tired? We have to understand the gravity of what we're praying for, what we're asking for. We go into the gym, we say, I want to lift 500 pounds. You don't really know what you're saying. But you're complaining about the five pounds that you're lifting. I have been through the same thing. I said, Lord, give me more. Lord, give me more. Give me more people, Lord. Give me more of this. And then he goes, I'm going to give you another person. And this person was really hard to deal with. And there was a point where I said, I can't do, I can't do that. And the Lord says, if you can't handle this one person, Jeremy, there's a lot worse people than that person. And there's a lot more stress than that one person brought to you. You want revival from what? You haven't really done anything for me. That would be like me saying, I need gas. And already having like almost a full tank of gas, going to the gas station, filling up, maxing out, and then just going home and just doing nothing all day for Jesus. <laughs> right? I mean, like, man, that was so hard. Like when I, as for me as a Christian, I am a soldier, I am a warrior. I want my tank to be completely empty by the time the day is through. I want to do as much as I can throughout the day that I've been commissioned to do as possible. I hope that's your goal too. But unfortunately, Jesus says there are many Christians, but there's not many laborers for the word of God. But those very ones are praying for revival the ones who aren't doing anything for the Lord. You know what revival looks like? An active person who's serving Christ. And revivals are really meant for people who are serving. People who are constantly emptying themselves out like those soldiers that go out and they do battle with the enemy. This is what battle with the enemy looks like. This is what it is. You proclaim the gospel to places unreached, whether online or in person. Whether in person or online, you proclaim the gospel. Every time you and I proclaim the gospel, whether online or in person, invite somebody to church, pray, teach people about the Bible, uh, do the work of the ministry. Every time we do that, the devil will attack us. People will attack us. We'll be shot at. We'll be hit with witchcraft. We'll be hit with this, that, this, that, blah, 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 blah. We'll suffer for our faith. 
Nobody wants to suffer for their faith, for Jesus. The moment I started trying to tell people about Jesus, man, you know how much warfare came at me? The moment I started to do ads for videos like this, you know how much demonic oppression happened? You know how much people hated me? How much people's flesh started lashing at me for no reason? Not just people I don't know, but people that I know and even people that I love. You know how much issues in my marriage I've had, had struggled because of the gospel? We have struggled. You know how much afflictions we have taken, mental, physical, psychological? I've gotten out of, of demonic oppression. I've been under for six months of depression. Six months of homicidal, suicidal thoughts and wrestling with the devil. And finally, I get this break, and I'm like, I'm ready to go back out. Just give me some grenades. I like that movie, Black Hawk Down, at the very end. This guy, he's been in the whole thing since it started, right? Check out the movie. And then he comes back. He's getting grenades. He's eating it real quick, and he's about to go out. One of the guys says, you're crazy. And he says, there's guys still out there. In other words, there's people who are still lost out there. And I did a message, you should check it out on YouTube at I Am Love Church. It's called Navy Seal for Jesus. I love the Navy Seals because they're willing to lay down their life. They're like, just give me a little bit of bread. Give me a little bit of water. I'm ready to go back out again. I'm ready to preach and proclaim, ready to evangelize. I'm ready to do, and, and, and in a business aspect, not just godly aspect, like there's only a few little wisdom that actually trans, transfers over from the king, into the kingdom of God that the world does that, that, that we should be doing as Christians is lab is um, constantly trying to grow, constantly trying to evangelize. In other words, like businesses, they thrive because they're constantly trying to figure out how can they reach more people? How can they make themselves more known? We see this in the business aspect of the worldly, worldly wisdom, but it's also what Jesus says is true and good. He did not come to necessarily build a church. He came to build a kingdom. And, and, and one of the last things he said is, go to all the nations and tell them about me. And what I've seen in churches is they don't do that. They only try to stay in their little bubble. And, and business-wise, if you do that, it will die. And that's the illustration of the parables that Jesus gives. Well, what was it again? They sat on the talent. It didn't do anything for the Lord. They just focused on their own building and their own activities in the building and the church slowly diminished. It died. Even in a business aspect, that's not wise. You're either gonna die or you're going to say, hey, we gotta do something different. Hey, we've got to go out there and proclaim the gospel. We gotta make ourselves known. And that's what we actively try to do. That's what businesses, that thriving businesses, most all businesses started off in a garage. That phone that you're, pro that you're looking at started off in a garage. It started off Apple. Apple started off in a garage. <laughs> and now it's a mega thing, right? And they're still trying to better their product. They're still trying to get more people to get their product. They're still trying different things, new things, and they're thriving. Every business that does that will survive. I've met amazing mom and pop fast food places or place food places, restaurants. They did not thrive. They were at amazing food, but they died or they're barely surviving. And I go, man, if you were just to promote your stuff, if you were just to make yourself known, if you were to just change and tweak just a little bit of things, man, everybody would be here. But now you're barely making it. You're, you're trying to figure out how to even survive as a business, or may I say, as a church. We need entrepreneurs in church, churches. Without entrepreneurs are always looking to, to the next thing. How to get to over there. How to try something new. How to perfect their craft. How to perfect, just do more, right? But the ones who die are the ones who are just like, we're just going to sit here and wait till Jesus comes back. 
We got our own little click here. We got our own little golden calf church here. This is all we're gonna do. And, if, and we're not gonna change anything because everybody else is wrong. <laughs> and they die. And then they wonder why nobody wants to come to their church or their business. They wonder why things aren't happening and da 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 da. Like I said, it's that illustration of that person who goes, you know, the, Jesus says, or God says in the Old Testament, he says, these shepherds feed themselves. They only take care of their, themselves. There's a lot of churches like that. Just sit there and they just take care of their own church. And you should take care of your church for sure. Right? Paul says you should take care of your church first. But a healthy church doesn't just try to take care of their own. They go out. This is the key to having a healthy church, to having a healthy business, is to constantly go out and reach the lost. To reach people that don't know you exist. They don't know who you are. And as one person put it, you're nobody until somebody, until you are somebody. Until people know who you are. And let me, let me stop here and tell you what we're doing. We've got t-shirts. A lot of places, a lot of businesses, a lot of churches don't even do t-shirts. We got t-shirts going on. We've got hats. We've got merchandise like this going on. We've got ads. We're doing, we're, we're doing videos online, not just on live stream, on our Facebook page. We do ads for that so, so it reaches out in a different places and whatnot. And sometimes we zero it in on certain towns or cities. And, I, and, and all the followers we have were because of ads. People like, people share, people pray. We post up prayers on there, pray for this person, pray for that. And I've heard amazing results because of those things. People come to be like, hey, man, when, you, when you've been praying for us, I'm like, yeah, I don't just pray for you myself. I post up your prayer, not your name or anything, and not too much information about praying for this person. We've got YouTube stuff going on. We're reaching the YouTube people. There's like this, if you do shorts on YouTube, it plays as like an instrument of like, um, advertises. It's like a self-advertising for just a YouTube short. There are so many ways, especially with the internet, to go reach people. And God has put on my heart to start handing business cards out with I Am Love Church website and all that stuff. Awesome. And then we pray and then God gives us stuff because he says, you're actually doing something for me. This is an active church. It's a living church because our God is living, amen? And he's active, amen? But have you ever noticed that there's a saying that um, if a river has to have a, or I'm sorry, a lake, it's a dead lake if they don't have, if water isn't coming in and water isn't getting out. If water is just coming in, it's gonna be a dead lake. If water is just going out but not coming in, it's gonna be dead. If our blood isn't moving, actively moving, it's gonna die. And we as a church have been put, just like the people in the military, have been put into the hostile country, into this hostile world to be active and to be moving. And when we're not active in moving, then we're not being the salt of the earth, which is preserving from the corruption of the earth, which is coming upon the world every day because people's natural tendency is to sin. When you see those places in California, when you see those places in other places in the United States or the other places in the world, and all that corruption, and all that evil, is because the churches there are not active. They're not moving. Or there's no churches there. When you see closed buildings or closed churches or closed businesses or relationships that have ended, it's because it's gone stagnant. I have to spice things up, so to speak, with my wife every once in a while. Otherwise, our marriage will die. Even with my friends, I got to keep it spicy. <laughs> Not in that way. <laughs> in, the, in the wholesome way, okay? In the Jesus way. <laughs> Get that out of your thoughts. So <laughs> with that being said, we got to be moving for the Lord. The Lord is always moving. He says, my father is always working. And so am I. What are you doing outside of your church to reach the lost? To reach people who don't even know Jesus. To bring people back who've fallen away from Jesus. And I don't mean fall away from the church. 
or building, which we mean, I mean falling away from Jesus. What are you doing to get the gospel out there? Man, if every Christian were, were just a, a proclaiming Christian, were just to proclaim the gospel for one day, we'd have a revival. If every Christian would just tell someone about Jesus, invite someone to church, one time we'd have a revival. Not just in this nation, it'd be super revival. It'll, it'll go out into all the nations. If one of us would actually step out of our comfort zone, step out of the golden calf that we call church, might it, might, not to mention that place, which I'll get into, is just a place of a huddle. It's just where we get together and rearmor, like I said. If we were to just step out one, one time, man, it would change lives. But we don't step out because we're selfish, number one. And number two, because we're afraid, which is part of selfishness. Only thinking about ourselves, protecting our own interests. The church is not just, it's not a cultish building. We can't, we don't, it's not a big enough building to fit everybody in, by the way. And that shouldn't be our desire. And that's not the kingdom of God. Jesus said the kingdom of God is not here or there. It's not this building, it's people. And there are people, more lost people out there than there are in any building, even mega church building. I don't want a mega church. The building is, is, is a huddle, you know, there's a baseball game, particularly a football game, right? They huddle together and they plan how they're gonna execute and how they're gonna go out there, right? Same thing in the military. They huddle together and how, how we're gonna come together, how we're gonna be re-strengthened, re-armored, re-fed, refilled, and then we go back out. That's all a revival is. That's all a retreat is. That's all any of these encounters are. That's all church is supposed to be. It's just to huddle together and go, okay, this is how the enemy's attacking. This da-da-da-da. Re-armor up and read da 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 right? da 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 I love saying that. That's all it's meant to be. And then we go back outside the wire and we do battle with the enemy by proclaiming the gospel, by bringing the lost to Christ, by getting people who've fallen away, POWs in sin, back to Jesus. But you know what? It hasn't, the, the, the church is not that anymore. Some churches are, right? They're still awesome doing amazing things for Jesus. They huddle together on Sunday or retreat or when they get a fresh outpouring from the Holy Spirit, like Asbury, awesome. Then you go back out. Did you notice that's the theme of the entire book of Acts? Temporary refreshment, rearmor, and then you send them back out. But our churches don't look like that. You know what our churches look like? People don't wanna go out. They don't want to do anything for Jesus. They go out and they get their boots muddy and they go, oh, I, got, I need new boots, Jesus. My boots are muddy. You just walked around the church building. That's it? That's all you did? You didn't really do anything? You didn't make it? No, nobody knows you're a Christian. When you are a Christian, you make everybody know you're a Christian. You're like, everybody gonna know. I want everybody to know care if they hate me but when you're an inactive christian you're gonna be like i'm ashamed i'm ashamed <laughs> and so we got a lot of so-called christian soldiers wanting all this equipment wanting all this awesome gear from the lord awesome wisdom awesome strength from the lord the lord's like i'm not giving you any of that because you don't do anything for me You don't do the little that I ask you to do. You don't even crawl under the bob wire fence that I ask you to crawl under. Why am I gonna give you this awesome Navy SEAL Jesus gear and strength? <laughs> Why am I gonna give you more people? Why am I gonna give you more tactics and more equipment? Why am I gonna give you more of myself if you don't do the little that I ask you to do? There's a lot of those churches. There's a lot of those so-called pastors. There's a lot of those ministers. There's a lot of those laymen and women. There's a lot of those dead. They're dying. That's a dying church. This is like a business. 
A business that doesn't go out will die. A, a church that doesn't go out will die. Because eventually those people will leave. They're not going to stay there forever. So you got to constantly be looking for new people because you don't know who will leave. They might be faithful for a season or even a decade and then out of nowhere, boop, they're going to be gone. You got to keep going out for the Lord. We got to keep figuring out how we're going to reach lost people and actually doing it. It's such a sad world we live in. It's sad when the church is stagnant and there are, it's really because of fear, selfishness, afraid. They're trying to build their own clique. Then that's when they becomes church war, right? How dare you leave this church? You do, how dare you betray us? How dare? Why? Because that means they're, they're that person that's holding on to the little they have. But a person who's constantly doing the work of the ministry, so to speak, they're not going to care. They're going to be like, oh, you can go, whatever. I've always got new people coming in. <laughs> Amen? We as a church need to rise up as individuals first. And if, it, it, you know, and anyway, here at I Am Love Church, we make it our business. We make it our mission to reach lost people because, hey, if you're saved, read your Bible, get a message and go about the way, go back out, right? But if, if you're just sitting there trying to build your own little kingdom here, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna have church war. <laughs> you're going to be envious when one church is exalted and you're not. We're not building a church. We're building a kingdom. When men come and try to take this church, I'm just going to start another one because it's not about the name. It's about Jesus. That's the only name we care about. We don't care if we get the glory or not. We care if he gets the glory. Amen. And we're just soldiers. I'm just a soldier in a battlefield. And in, just like in the military, they wear different uniforms, different branches wear different uniforms. We wear the, the uniform of I am love church. But really, we all wear the Holy Spirit, Jesus. Amen. And so we're right now I'm in this break where I get to talk about this stuff, where I get to say, hey, if you want to learn from us, this is what we're doing. We're praying for the lost, people who aren't saved. We're going out and evangelizing. We're going out and proclaiming the gospel. We're going out and doing things for Jesus. And God has is bringing in a harvest. That's why we have so many followers on our page. That's why we our views are going up. That's why people are knowing more of who we are because we're actually going and doing stuff. You can learn from us or you can be envious and you, you whatever, right? Jesus is saying, don't be asking for revival and new equipment and new refreshment and new strength when you're not doing anything for me. I mean, you can still ask him if you want. He might still give it to you, but that's what I've learned. You guys want this revival thing happening. I get revivals every day. I get refreshed pretty much every day. I get new strength pretty much every day. I get new wisdom pretty much every day I ask. And I look at all these other people like, well, we don't get that. You don't get it because you're not actually going out. Like the soldiers, when I was in Iraq, going out of the wire and confronting the enemy. That's why you're not getting new equipment. The, the soldiers that go out and do battle with the enemy, we don't come back for weeks. We're muddy, our uniforms don't even look like uniforms anymore. It look like we're wearing mud. Even now we wash them, they're just black out of sweat and running and all this crawling through mud and all that stuff. We come back, we get new equipment because we need it, because we're actively using it. But if you're not actively using the equipment, the little that God has given you, and trust me, God has given all of us something, then God will never send you new equipment, new strength, new armor, new wisdom. You're gonna be like, I'm not giving you that. That's why I love the Navy SEALs. They get anything they want. You know why? Because they're active. They're actively doing things. They're actively using their night vision. They're actively using the cool gadgets that they get. They're not just saying they want this stuff just to have it and sit, put it on a shelf. And when we as a church are not active, God's not gonna give us the cool stuff. 
He's not gonna give us the cool wisdom, the awesome strength that comes with it. That's the responsibility. He who is faithful with little will get more. But he or she who's not doing anything for Jesus is not gonna get the refreshment, the revival, the new strength, the new armor, the new gear, the more finances for their church. Because you're not using the little finances that God gave you. You're just sitting there waiting and trying to build this, your own kingdom. So as much as this message sounds like a rebuke, and it is, it should also encourage you. It encourages me. Because there are times where I, I, I'm lazy. <laughs> I'm tired. And most of it is rightfully so. But I'm always like, how can I do more for you? How can I lay my life down more for you, Jesus? Because there's nothing like it. That brotherhood you get. That fellowship with the Holy Spirit that you get. That most people don't get. Because most people are not willing to let alone live for Jesus, be a Christian, be an active Christian, and do dangerous things for him. Amen? And what I've seen is like, you have to be an active Christian to get refreshed to get revival, new strength, new armor, new wisdom. You have to be an active Christian. So it's funny because the most of the Christians that I see that are like, they're not active. They're not doing anything for Jesus and they're praying for a lot. And I'm like, he's not gonna give you that. He's gonna give you what you need and what you're using. He's not gonna give you what you're not using and what you don't need. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you for this word. Bless us, encourage us, to step out, to do something for you, Lord, and to be faithful with the little you've given us. You don't give us more than we handle. You give us what we are already handling. And when we're willing to do more for you, you increase us. Not before, but a little later. Just to see if we're willing to do that dangerous thing. Father, we thank you for this message. Bless us, bless our hearts, bless them. Lord Jesus, forgive us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In your name, amen, and God bless. I'll swap flies in here. <laughs>